Hello, I'm Mary Newa. Along with me are my colleagues, Memory Banda, Issa Mbewe, and Joseph Konje. We'll take you through a financial performance analysis for Icon properties. Our presentation will start with a brief introduction about Icon properties. Thereafter, we'll go through the financial performance analysis in which we'll look at the profitability, liquidity, financial gearing, and asset management ratios. After that, we'll go through the challenges impacting ICON business. Thereafter, we'll look at the recommendation and finally conclusion. ICON Properties is a property investment company incorporated in Malawi in the year 2018 as a private limited company. Later in the same year, the company was incorporated as a public investment company in which it was registered on Malawi Stock Exchange. The core business of Icon Properties uh, includes owning, leasing, managing, and developing commercial, industrial, and retail properties. Currently, Icon Properties does not have in-house staff. The company uh, is instead making use of Nico Asset Managers and the Aries Properties Limited to manage its business, in which the Nico Asset Managers handles the company's investment, financial, tax, and secretarial services. On the other hand, Aries Properties Limited looks at the company's asset management services. Our analysis was based on the financial statements for the year ending 2020 and 2019. These tables shows uh, Icon Properties balance sheets and income statements, which we have used for our analysis. We have analyzed Icon's financial performance by looking at the financial ratios. These, the ratios used in our presentation includes profitability, liquidity, financial gearing, and asset management. My colleague Issa will take you from here. All right, thank you so much, Mary. Um, in terms of profitability, what is mainly looked at is the uh, total amount of sales versus the expenses made in a business. But then to actually analyze the um, financial performance of the company, there are two ratios that we can look at that can give us more in-depth uh, 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 information in terms of the performance of the company. So the first ratio we'll look at is the return on capital employed ratio, and then the other ratio will be the return on equity ratio. So on the return on, 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 on capital employed ratio, we mainly compare the earnings before interest and tax against um, 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 the capital employed to the business. So the standard worldwide is 15% for standard businesses. But for property investment uh, uh, businesses, 10% uh, is considered fair looking at the kind of investments that they do because most of the investments are long-term investments which their returns actually delay for more than one, uh, one year period. So for Icon Properties, we found out that in 2019, they had a return on capital employed ratio of 6.49%. And in the next year, which was 2020, the, the capital the return on capital employed ratio was 7.74%. So this was below the margin. And after we contacted Icon Properties and uh, the asset managers, they told us that this was the case in these two years because they had invested in some, they were making some investments in uh, some uh, businesses which were actually ongoing and the investment had, hadn't yet materialized and it hadn't started receiving its returns yet. So that's why they were below the recommended standard. So now we also looked at the return on capital ratio. So this ratio compares the earnings after taxes and um, preferred uh, dividends over the shareholders' capital that was invested into the business. So the standard is 15%, but for property investment companies, the standard is also uh, reduced to 10. 10 is considered fair enough. So for this ratio, we found out that in 2019, Icon had 9 point five percent ratio and in 2020 they had 9.9% .9 ratio. So it was slightly below the recommended uh, uh, percentage ratio, but it was okay. It was performing okay in terms of uh, the return on equity. So as we we're also looking at the financial performance, we looked at the liquidity ratios. So what liquidity ratios tell us is mainly 
the ability of the company to pay off its debt at a given point of time. So there are two types of liquidity ratios, which uh, we have a quick ratio and current ratio. So uh, for this um, analysis, we looked at the current uh, ratio as the financial statements did not have any inventories. So for the current ratio, um, we looked at the current assets that Icon Properties has over the current liabilities that it has. So the current assets involve um, investments that um, can be converted into money within a period of one year. And the current liabilities uh, are the, uh, the money Icon Properties owns, owns people that has to be paid back within the period of one year. So the recommended ratio for this one is uh, more than or equal to one. So for Icon Properties, we found out that in 2019, they had the ratio of 7.3%, and in 2020, it had the ratio of 30.2%. Uh, so this is way above the recommended uh, standard in terms of liquidity, which tells us that Icon is a company that is very healthy. It is able to pay back its, the debts that it has currently, and then uh, it, 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 can, it, it, it can pay off the debt and it can actually have um, the remaining funds after paying off its debt at any given period of time in 2020. So we can conclude that Icon is a company that can be trusted and that an investor can actually put their money in. So talking about um, investors and uh, risking their money in Icon properties, we looked at the financial gearing ratio. So this ratio um, measures um, uh, the comparison between the equity that has been invested into the company and debt. So the standard for this ratio is 25%. 25% is considered that the company has a very low risk and anything above 25 to 50% is acceptable, but anything above 50% is considered very risky. So for Icon, in 2019, the gearing ratio was 0.24% and in the coming year, 2020, it was 1.57%. So this means Icon is a company that um, poses very low risk to its investors. And it's an and the company that we can recommend to investors to put their money in because it doesn't pose any risk um, in terms of their investment. So from here, my colleague Mary will take us through the asset management ratio. Um, thank you so much, Josephy. Uh, so it's actually a memory. So I'll take it over uh, from here. And uh, through this efficiency, and we use the asset management uh, ratios. And we looked at the days of sales, outstanding ratio, and assets turn over. And on the number of sales, uh, outstanding ratio, uh, this actually calculates the average number of days for a company it takes for them to collect its payment. Uh, for a healthy company, uh, the number of days should not exceed uh, 45. So when you look at this uh, in 2019, uh, the number of days uh, went above it, it was 96 days. And uh, in 2020, uh, it was within the range 44 days. And uh, this tells us that there was a very big improvement uh, in 2020, since the company collected its payments within the 45 uh, days. And maybe this is because as uh, a company uh, strategized on um, uh, its uh, debt payment plans uh, with its clients. And uh, looking at the total uh, asset uh, turnover, uh, which is uh, actually way below uh, the standard uh, for at international level, when you look at the total asset turnover for 2019, it's 0 0.07, and for 2020, it's at 0.08. Uh, this actually shows that the company did not perform well in net sales for both years, uh, even though the company is actually uh, asset based. And we also looked at the cash flow, uh, which actually normalizes the amount of cash that comes in. And uh, looking at uh, iconic property, the cash flow in operation activities is actually negative. Uh, so uh, at standard level, the negative uh, cash flow uh, in operating activities, it means that the company spent more in operation than the, than the money that the company receives. Uh, so the company can do better than this because uh, this is uh, a, a very negative uh, side and uh, it's not uh, recommended uh, for a company to uh, 
uh, to put more uh, in operating activities. And cash flow in investment activities, activities those are for cash uh, and major investments was made in treasury in 2019. And cash flow uh, in financing activities, uh, the analysis shows that if the dividends were actually paid to these shareholders in both years, uh, this company is on the right track and does not heavily rely on the liabilities uh, and debts. And uh, looking at the expenditure on share capital uh, restructuring, it actually remained constant uh, across 2019 and 2020. Uh, and this is probably because the company uh, policies actually remain the same uh, throughout uh, both years, 2019 and 2020. And uh, from here, my colleague, uh, Joseph, uh, will take us through. Thank you very much, Memory. Um, I will look now at the challenges that are impacting the business. Um, first of all, we looked at the COVID. Uh, COVID impacted the business quite a lot. As you are aware, uh, business slowed down. So it was the same with the uh, Icon properties. Um, there was no disposable income on most of its clients. As a result, the lender were not adjusted and they didn't make much money. Uh, but also we noticed high administrative and the operational costs especially uh, as a Mary said, uh, Icon Properties does not have its own staff, so they rely on asset managers who normally undertake um, the secretarial and accounting services, including property management. So there was high cost of running those uh, uh, functions. We also noted that inflation, uh, both low and high, had an impact, especially low inflation impacted quite a lot on taxation. If you look at the, um, the uh, uh, balance sheet, you will notice that in 2020, uh, income, I mean, Icon properties had to pay high uh, tax. This was because of the low inflation that uh, occurred during the time that uh, they had uh, moved to 2019 to 2020. But also we noticed that uh, the company had limited investment on current assets, which impacted on their cash flow, especially the availability of cash to run the, their operations. So these were the major uh, challenges that the company had faced. Um, however, the company also, uh, we noticed that there are opportunities within the company, regardless of the challenges that are indicated. One of them is that the company is investing quite a lot in commercial and industrial, uh, including literal projects, which have got huge impact on in future uh, income generation. One of them is the drive-through of KFC at Chichirimo and also the new Lyos Hotel in Lilongwe. But again, uh, there's also an opportunity because the organization is undergoing restructuring where they are looking at uh, uh, aligning their subsidiaries to the operations of the organization to ensure that they maximize their profits from those subsidiaries. And now, after looking at all those challenges and opportunities, we recommend as follows that Icon properties need to maintain the low liabilities um, and also increase share capital with the aim of investing more so that the returns uh, should be high uh, uh, and more profits being generated. And again, this being a long term property, we are proposing that. Um, um, there's a need to consider investing in the current assets uh, so that uh, the current assets should be able to assist in generating cash for supporting the operations of the organization on a daily basis. Because currently, if you look at the cash flow statement, um, there were some components that are showing negative, which means there was a limited cash that uh, was available. Lastly, we recommend uh, that uh, Icon properties should have an in-house personnel, which should support the uh, accounting and the also management of the property, um, other than relying on the asset managers. Because when we looked at the deals, the fees that are paid to uh, asset managers, they were contributing to close to 40% of the total administrative cost of the organization. And in conclusion, we are saying there's a bright future in this company, and we hope that it, uh, with the investment that they are currently doing the projects, I think they should be able to make more profits. Um, this is also 
uh, manifested from the cash flow balance sheet and equity, um, including income statement, which have all registered positive figures at the end of the year. So we have hope that this company um, is here to stay and to make more profits. Thank you very much. And if there are questions, we are ready to take them. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Joseph and Tim. Uh, a very good presentation, uh, very insightful. And the, I believe it will even help the management of ICON. Uh, so you mentioned in your presentation that uh, the company uh, is a property investment company. So I would like to know uh, what are some of the properties that ICON uh, is managing or is a shareholder here in Malawi? Thank you. Thank you for your question, Jablani. So your question was about the major investment of ICON. So just to mention a few, ICON has uh, investments such as Chichiri Shopping Mall, which is in Blanta. It also has Kangombe Building, which is in Lilongwe, and also Lilongwe Shopping Mall in Lilongwe. We can get uh, a second question, if any. Thank you very much for the wonderful presentation in which we are looking at the performance of ICON properties. And in your presentation, you have mentioned that the total asset turnover ratio for both 2020 and 2019 was 0 0.8 and 0 0.7, respectively, which you also highlighted that it was below recommended standards of around 2.25 to 5. Did you try to explore what contributed to this poor performance for the company? Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, Daniel, uh, for that. due to non-payment of lentils by some months, as uh, COVID-19 was actually something that contributed to that uh, a lot. And uh, other investments uh, had not yet materialized, as this company is actually asset-based, and uh, we, we assume that they're still uh, in pipeline. If, if that has answered your much. question. All right, so can we take uh, another question, if any? Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for the comprehensive presentation. I have one question. Uh, you explained in the presentation that debt collection for the company improved to 44 days in 2020, which is way above the set standard of 45 days. Could there be reasons why there was this good performance by the company? Thank you. Thank you, Emma. Uh, let me attempt that. Um, yes, uh, um, we our analysis had shown that uh, I think Icon Properties had uh, engaged another company to assist in debt management, which was Ellis Properties. Uh, apart from Nico, they had also Ellis Properties who were engaged to do uh, the property management services and also debt recollection. But uh, let me ask maybe my colleague Esau if he has something to add. Uh, thank you, Joseph. Um, I think what I can add is um, most of the debt that was uh, 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 defaulted in the previous years was due to the COVID pandemic, whereby their clients did not make enough um, sales. So I could understood that, and they actually developed a debt recovery recovery plan, whereby they actually engaged their clients to say, uh, "This year is." Uh, um, 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 uh, let's come up with a payment plan and they actually flexibly uh, agree on the terms on how the debt is going to be repaid. So I think that's one of the ways in which it has managed to actually improve in terms of um, uh, debt collection. Thank you. Thank you, 